In New Vegas, there's a fairly well-known scene that occurs whenever the player shoots the NCR Memorial at Boulder City, in which Private Kowalski will run onto the player and will ask them why they did that. In my Can You Beat Fallout New Vegas with only a BB gun video, I realise that Kowalski will literally follow the player the entire way across the map if he has to. Which made me wonder, would it be possible to finish the main quest without him ever catching up with the player? Well, that's what I aim to find out as today we figure out Can You Beat Fallout New Vegas while being chased by Private Kowalski? When building my character I prioritise agility and endurance for extra speed and hit points, and then just emptied the charisma stat and put the rest of the points into intelligence for some extra skill points when levelling up. Since the goal of this challenge is to just not have Kowalski catch us, I'm actually able to just build a normal character for a change rather than having to make sure I get the absolute most out of one specific weapon thanks to my build. For my tag skills I go with guns, speech and medicine, and then for my traits I take skilled and wild wasteland, neither of which really matter all that much in the grand scheme of things for this run. I use my extra points in medicine as well to convince Doc Mitchell to give me a few extra stim packs before I leave. Now to explain exactly how we're going to do this, since the goal is to have Kowalski chase us through as much of the game as feasibly possible, as soon as I leave Doc Mitchell's house I just begin making my way towards Boulder City via the shortcut through Black Mountain. On the way there I briefly wondered what Fallout would be like in a world where it was a 2.5D side scroller and may have given myself an idea for a future challenge in the process. It was also at this time I discovered Hidden Valley and added another rule to make things a little more interesting. I decided that fast travel would be banned from this run, mainly because it defeats the point of the challenge if I can essentially just teleport around the map. I eventually went my way to the 188 trading post and from there head southeast until I'm on top of a cliff overlooking Boulder City, and more importantly, Private Kowalski. With my 10mm pistol in hand I fired a shot in his general direction and as soon as I was certain that he was hot on our trail I turned around and now the challenge could truly begin. Okay, so thanks to my light armour and extra points in agility, I am able to outspeed him for the time being, and from here I began forming my strategy for beating this challenge. Essentially, the idea is I'm to never stop moving unless absolutely necessary, as every second counts. Because I don't want to be in a situation where I'm somewhere like Freeside, which is rather narrow in design, and that's basically a guaranteed failure there as I won't have enough space to outmaneuver him. I quickly realised that going to Camp McCarran and taking the monorail would be my best chance of staying ahead because I probably wouldn't have the time to sit around in Freeside doing odd jobs to get around 2,000 caps. Arriving at the strip with no time to lose, I go to the tops to have a nice chat with Benny. With the platinum chip, as well as pieces of Benny's fingers now in my back pocket, I head for the white gloves to offer them the same type of conversation. The same glitch that happened in my kill everything run, happened again. Where all the sound just stopped and then when I tried to go to a new area, it crashed. Regardless, next try when it doesn't crash, it goes about as well as I could have hoped, as it doesn't take a genius to figure out that a shotgun beats a walking stick. I also dealt with anyone else who even remotely got in my way. You know what's coming next, so let's speed through it. I go to the Lucky 38 and get House out of the picture with relative ease, followed by letting the Amertus aware of my presence with a few gifts lodged firmly in the Greeter's corneas. I then introduce myself to Yes Man and inform him that half of the work is already finished. At this point I had spent a lot of time running up and down the strip and was becoming progressively more paranoid that at any moment Kowalski could show up as staying in one area for too long is not a good idea. So upon leaving the strip I made a map of exactly where I would go from here on out, and in what order to prevent myself from doubling back on Kowalski. The plan was to leave Freeside via the north gate and from there make my way up the road to the boomers, then once that was done I would leave the airfield and head south towards Black Mountain to get back to the hidden bunker and deal with the Brotherhood. And then finally, using the same shortcut I used through Black Mountain earlier to avoid the Death Closet Quarry Junction, I would then make my way to Red Rock Canyon and double back past Camp McCarran and into Freeside and back to the Strip. Sounds reasonable, right? Yeah, well, it didn't go entirely according to plan. Arriving at Nellis, I got through the welcome wagon without taking much damage at all, which is a nice change from the last few attempts, I can assure you. Speaking of things different from the last few playthroughs, I'm murdering the boomers again. Why? because it's just too much fun having access to a grenade launcher and all this ammo. I'm not a complete monster however, so I went and fixed the patients in the clinic before I left. On the way out, I also took the rocket launcher from the guard at the gate, because I'm heading to Hidden Valley next after all, and not once have I settled matters peacefully with the Brotherhood in one of these challenges. Outside field shack, I explode two nearby chem addicts because drugs are bad and I want them. Further on in my journey south, I was attacked by some golden geckos. Naturally, they would not pose an issue, but after I killed the first one, his friend just began to look down at the ground and sulk away. This might be the first time I've ever felt genuinely sad about my actions in a Fallout game. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. I got shunned by the NCR whenever I murdered the two people at the Grub Hub or whatever. 
which made me realize that I would have to make sure not to get my rep with them any lower, otherwise Kowalski might stop chasing me, as if they are vilified, they will shoot you on sight rather than just talk to you. Which made me think he would more than likely either stop dead in his tracks or head back to Boulder City, which also would count as me failing the run. As I made my way closer to the Black Mountain shortcut, I got progressively more paranoid as this is close to the last place I saw him. I was so paranoid in fact that I had a mini heart attack when I believed that this cactus was in fact Kowalski. <laughs> Remember how I mentioned before how following the map I made didn't go to plan? Well, this is what I was referring to as rather than go back the exact way I came earlier, I instead went through Scorpion Town. I don't need to explain why that was a terrible idea. I hit a point where I was low enough on ammo and medical supplies that I just had to run because I needed something to fight the Brotherhood with. The plan was to just bombard the Brotherhood with missiles till either there was nothing left of them or I ran out of rockets, whichever came first. What did come first was me dying. Multiple times in fact. As usual their Gauss rifles were just ripping through my armour and health to the point where I may as well be naked. I was able to finish them off when I got all of them in an initial blast and then was able to take cover behind a box and jump out and deal with any stragglers with a sequel to the missile. Once I was able to grab the keys and leave, I actually made my way back through the Black Mountain shortcut like planned and began the slow walk to the Great Cans with no healing supplies and less than half health. Needless to say, when I arrived I just got the quest update saying I met them and immediately left. There was no way I was killing them all this time. Well, that said, I did satiate a bit of my bloodlust by stuffing a live grenade in this one's shoes. I found the Great Cans armory in the basement of this old house. Something I didn't know existed. The armory, that is, not basements. I promptly cleared them out and got myself a hunting shotgun, not quite the riot shotgun, but I am a sucker for a good pump action shotgun. And it was good. I had a few annoying run-ins with fiends and some mines that really wouldn't have been a problem if I had some way to heal myself, but alas I do not, so I instead decided to make another slight deviation to take a slightly longer path around to Camp McCarran and then freeze out. This went much better. That was until... I spotted him outside Camp McCarran, and he was very much still in hot pursuit. I was shocked by how close he was, I would have assumed he would be further away by now, but it was not the case unfortunately. I ran around the back of a nearby building to try and gain a little distance, as well as hope he may get slightly sidetracked by the nearby fiends. To say this put the fear of God back in me would be an understatement. This is where a new plan formed, which was to head to the Gunrunners, Mick and Ralphs, and then the followers to stock him as much ammo and stim packs that I could afford, and then sprint back to Yes Man to inform him I met all the tribes and it was time to go to the station which was all the way back near Black Mountain again. Terrific. <laughs> totally not regretting that rule about fast travel now. Needless to say, this was the most stress inducing jog in a video game I've ever had the displeasure of taking part in because I was not too far from Freeside when I noticed he was once again within 20 feet of me. Upon getting close to the gas station, I put on my NCR uniform to let me sneak inside and par everything up without getting me attacked by them all and losing reputation. The final run to the strip before the end wasn't too interesting, Never once spotted Kowalski on the way back, which I'm not sure if that is more or less terrifying, as I kind of like knowing whereabouts he is before he smashes down a door and surprises me somewhere. My brother died at the Battle of Hoover Dam. You're desecrating a war memorial. Well, back in the Lucky 38, I inform Yes Man that the President can suck a lemon for all I care and proceed to the end of the game. Now that I've been transported to the endgame version of Hoover Dam, which I'm fairly sure exists outside the normal map, there should be feasibly no way Kowalski can reach me now. For good measure, I did finish the rest of the game just for the sake of it, but he never did appear. So with that, the run is over and I can confirm, yes, you can indeed beat Fallout New Vegas while being chased by Private Kowalski. This was a fairly quick yet fun challenge to record because as I said for the most part it's just a normal playthrough only that you basically have death itself following you the whole time and should he reach you it's game over. I hope you all liked the idea even if it was a bit of a shorter video. Regardless that's going to be the end of this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw consider giving the video a like and if you're interested in more challenges in the future feel free to subscribe as I try to have one of these videos out every week. My name's Nervit, stay safe everyone and I'll see you all in the next video.